Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for another episode of the Leadership for the Now show. Today, I'm joined by Nina Shini, the CEO of Social Works. Welcome, Nina. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Great to have you. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, the, the markets are changing a bit right now, so we're just trying to adapt. But other than that, I'm good. All right on, right on. So before we start, tell us a little bit about yourself. So you are running um, an advertising company specialized in influencer marketing in Denmark, right? In Copenhagen. Yes. And, yes. and you're also on Forbes list 30 under 30 for marketing. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you start it with marketing and uh, influencer marketing? Yeah, of course. Um, I started in this area or this space about 10 years ago with uh, founding one of the first influence agencies of Scandinavia. So that was uh, in this industry, it's a long time ago and it was before it was even called an influencer that was called bloggers or YouTubers, or it didn't have like a term in a general term for that. So I've been building the industry and been part of professionalizing it. And it has been quite a journey. All right. Well, yeah. And thank you. What are some of the names? Uh, tell us what are some of the names that you work with? Like, I know you were specializing in the fashion industry mostly, right? Yeah, we actually, it, it is 50% is a, a, approximately is fashion, but we specialize in lifestyle brands. So we have a lot of beauty clients, cars, food, healthy opportunities and, and similar. So it's a lot of, a lot of the clients are all pretty much all of our clients are lifestyle brands. For, for consumers. Right on. And I read on your on your website about the number of people that you could reach with your talent. What is that? Is that 400 million people? Yeah, it's, it's some time ago, actually, since we did the calculations. But when we combined the reach of our, all, all our network on the different platforms out there, uh, last time it was more than 400 million, but it's probably much more now. All right on. Yeah, thank you. I mean... It's probably amazing to be able to, if you think about that, in one way, control the communication with so many people, right? So by the things that you do and, and you um, you know, offer to those brands that are able to show their products and services to those people. So tell us a little bit about uh, what is your view on leadership? So how would you define leadership for today? You're a leader yourself, you have your own company, but also you're connected with some leaders. Like I would assume that you speak with those um, marketing, um, you know, directors in those big companies, right, that you work with. So what what do you hear? What's the conversation that you hear in those circles? About uh, leadership or about... Yeah. Uh, yeah. First of all, about leadership, but then also about... Because I think you have an, a view that many of us do not have. So I'm in the personal development leadership training mm -hmm. um, field, and I don't have a view of how can companies and leaders use influencer marketing and what should they know about that but let's first look at your view on leadership and then your view of what are some things that leaders should know about what you do mm. yeah actually i would say um there's there are a lot of parallels in being an influencer and being a leader and i would highly compare these two um because being an influencer and being able to communicate to, for some of them, 100 million people in just one click, you have to be very aware uh, in the same way as a leader has. A leader has to be really aware of what they say and the effect of what they are saying. And that would be the same if you're an influencer. You have to be very aware of how you act as a role model and how you portray yourself and how you will educate and how everything will affect the communities that you are talking to and you can also compare it to being a pol in politic it's it's very much about being aware and that is because it has matured a lot now so how it was maybe even five years ago is very different now so you have to be a leader to be a great influencer right now so that i'm sure that's also what a lot of the marketing directors are are looking at is are they really capable of communicating, communicating to our clients? Do we want these influences to affect our communities? So I'd say they, these two things carry a lot of uh, parallels. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because one of the things that we teach in leadership is that 
people do what people see, right? So uh, your actions as a leader would speak more than your words, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same with influencers, right? So they are leaders in those Mm -hmm. communities that they speak to and uh, their actions and the products that they choose to associate with, right? Will Mm -hmm. have effects upon those communities. So absolutely right on, yeah. Yeah. So and what would be also, no? yes. Sorry, no. go on. I would just say it's also because all, especially all our influences, they are all influenced in, in on in their own unique way, and that's part of the same as being a leader of it as well. Is that you have to have healthy values and you have to be authentic because that creates trust with the people following following you, and that's also where I see there are a lot of the, the same things as being a leader and being an influencer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, trust, uh, it's, it's absolutely one of the... I mean, with trust, you can influence people, but without, you can't influence people. Exactly. So, yeah, absolutely. It is the same. So what would be then some of the, the, the things that you do with your team, right? So in terms of building... I know you uh, you have a team that you, you're working and building on, and you have talent that is actually... Would it, would it be fair to say that it's the same age like you around the 30s, right? Because I usually speak with leaders in bigger corporations and they have a talent pool, which is, I will not say use the word older, but it's more experienced, right? And so yeah. how do you attract talent in today's world, and especially in so in such a competitive field like, like your field? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think for us, we do have... Uh, different age groups um, but it's it's correct that a lot of them are in the around the 30s Mm -hmm. Um, it's not so much about the age it's more about for us it's more about are you able to really understand the digital age and the whole space of influence marketing and you can definitely be 50 and understand this and you can also be 25 and not really understand this (laughs) so so we're not specific on the age but uh, we have done some really mis- some mistakes before where we thought, okay, now we need some senior people because they can tell us what to do and how to do this. But they didn't understand the product at all. So we had to, had to do it in another way. So now we have existed for five years and we experienced that for us, my co- co-partner and I, uh, we are pretty much the leaders now and we have our creative director as well. She's also... Um, main part of the management team but for us it's also more about growing leaders within the team so the future leaders so people that we see are doing a really good effort that we're trying to grow them into becoming leaders instead because they will really understand the digital space and our product yeah right on and i think also at least from my perspective you're operating in the field that there is i know there are marketing schools right now but people in their 40s or 50s, um, they didn't have a marketing school 20 years ago, right, to attend. Yeah. And yeah. so then how do you deal with, with that, right? Because someone more experienced would mean that they work with a product or a service that didn't exist, right? So mm-hmm. how do you, you know, Instagram, right, LinkedIn Live, it is something that we do right now. It was mm-hmm. not here one year ago. And so how can we, you know, no. how do you balance between someone having the experience with working with a program which is very new uh, mm-hmm. with maybe the person being willing to learn knowing that this will change you know mm-hmm. very very often yeah i think it's only a question of a couple for here in denmark so only a couple of years ago when they started to teach this in school for many years we were and we still still are booked to go into the schools and teach these subjects so so for us it's it's more about getting the right marketing people and then they will either have to have learned these subjects themselves or we will teach them everything they need to know about the specific different areas of influencer marketing because it's not just one topic it's it's data it's creatives it's communication it's a lot of different subjects that you have to be a master at so i think five years ago it was very hard for us to even hire people because they didn't have any experience within this at all. So we had to look at different industries that had some parallels to this. But now people are starting to have more experience because companies are also starting to use social media more within the companies. So there are more people to to work with now and improve. Right. So what would you say to a company leader that doesn't 
use um, maybe social media to the extent that they should or specific influencer marketing? Like, what do they need to be aware of to be more open to the idea? Yeah. Um, I think, of course, it depends on the company that you have and how you do it and what you do. But it is, you know, times are changing. And before you maybe you did a TV commercial and then you had to book a model, you had to book the studio, you had to do the, the commercial, you had to have a face for the video, maybe uh, if it wasn't a model, then maybe a, a, a famous person, you had to get somewhere to distribute the content, you had to have a, a lot of elements and that required a lot of people as well. But now you have these people that have all these assets in one person. So it's not because it's totally different from what we did before, it's just a much cheaper and much more effective way to do it now than it was before. And these are also for a lot of brands, social media is also where their clients are spending a lot of time. Yeah. And so what you're saying is that if before you would hire a model and then, for example, let's, let's take a product like a, like a car, right? So you would hire a model and then you would put a person to drive the car and then film and everything. Now, what you're saying, send us the car or send us the product, right? And there is a team who takes care of all that to place that product or service, right? With yeah. the influencer. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be a team. It's the influencer that has a lot of capabilities within that one person. Oh, wow. Right on. Well, it's a very interesting topic for me. And so what would be then the, the biggest challenge that, that you see with, with leadership moving forward? Like, what, would you, what, what do you see from your perspective? What would leaders uh, face as challenges in, in 2022, for example? Yeah. Um, as mm, 2022 is, or also 2021 and 2020, have been a lot more online, a lot more online work, and everything has been much more remote. So I think it's important to be aware of the differences between communication online and communication in the physical space. Like, for example, people are communicating very differently on social media. And we are also seeing that empathy is much lower online than it is in the physical space. And it has been very interesting to study this and find out what is actually causing that the empathy is lower on, on online than it is in the real world. And we have discovered that there are three main reasons why people have less empathy online than in the real world. But I don't know, do you, do you have an idea what these three topics are? I would like to discuss. No, I don't know. I have no idea, actually. I mean, people have less empathy into the online world than in the physical world. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what you concluded, right? Yeah, some, some people, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm curious. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the reasons is because people feel more anonymous, is that they feel like other people don't know exactly who they are it could even be because they are hiding behind a, an anonymous, anonymous name or even it's just that they people can't see them how they look or who they are so they feel like they're less they're more anonym, anonymous and then mm -hmm. it's also because there, there's no eye contact when you're uh, writing online and you don't get that immediate feedback like when you're talking to a person in front of you you can see their pupils and their eyes and how they're reacting to the words you say and then you adapt but when you're sitting there and typing the things you're writing, you don't get that physical or that feedback to adjust your topic. And then also some of them don't feel like there's this, this punishment, uh, that relationship punishment online as there is in the real world. Like you, you, people can't tell anything back in the same way as they can in the physical space. So this, they can't really be confronted in the same way as in the physical space. And of course, this, this doesn't mean that you can't lead remotely or online and any, uh, anything like that. It's just a great example of that you have to be aware of that the empathy part is lowered online when you work online. And that's not maybe between the leader and the employee, but that can also be when teams are working remotely. If you have a team working in India and you have one working in Denmark or somewhere, then you have one thing is the cultural clinch, but it's also that they won't be able to have the same relationship online as they would if they were working face to face. So that's just something to be aware of and a challenge to to face in twenty in the years to come in twenty twenty two and many years to come. Yeah, 
I think it makes a lot of sense. And it was something that one of our previous guests, uh, Jonas Carles from Mina Technology shared. He, mm -hmm. he was also mentioning like, why would someone be, you know, use the mute button into into an online meeting, right? Uh, they are on the Zoom or Teams and they're, they're muted or they don't use the camera, right? Uh, and, and that detracts from the interaction. And I can see how that will then translate into a lack of empathy. So yeah. leaders should be right. more aware that we're not getting that kind of feedback, right, from our exactly. teams. And that's also exactly like, like you're saying, that online meetings are really good because then you can get more of that feedback that, that you're missing if you're, in, if you're just writing or calling. Because what I've heard is that what, of what you're saying, the words are only 7%. And the rest is body language and the tone and all that. And if you mute, then of course you, you, you're you not part of saying anything, but if you don't have the video, then you can't see your body language and everything. So this will just make the, the communication less, um, the quality will not be as good. Yeah. So what are you doing with, with your team to work, you know, you know, to overcome that? Like I assume uh, now with Denmark, it's also, advising work from home right again so so i assume you your team works remotely is yeah. that is that true yeah yeah that's true it's of course if you do have that good relationship with your team it's you don't have to create the relationship online so if you already have a strong team then you can manage working from home it's then i don't see a problem with this the real problem is when you have to create new relationships then you have to be really aware of of the distance and the the things that online communications will affect. Right on. Yeah, makes absolutely sense. So that works quite well with teams that know each other, but it's much more difficult to create a relationship yeah. online. Also, so with new clients, the, also with new clients, if you have had a meeting in person already, then you have created that bond and that will make it much easier to communicate online afterwards. So our first meeting online is also it, it's manageable, but it's it's difficult. Right. So one of the questions that we have is like, how can we develop that emotional contact in in our online meetings, right? So, so that's that's something that um, it's probably top of mind for many people. Like, l let's say maybe you're a leader and you have a, a new employee that its first contact it's online, or as you say, maybe a new a new client, right? And its first contact online. What would be some of the things that you do to create that contact? Yeah. Of course, it's it's just the written language. It's possible if you have a simple conversation, but if it's about creating that relationship, you just need to think about how can you make this conversation about more than the exact words, but also how can I use my body language and how can I use my tone? So a phone call will already improve a lot and even better online meetings if you can do that. Uh, right, and I, I, I can see how that will absolutely add to the because written word. I found in working with leaders that, um, and this is also internal as external communication. So you work a lot with external communication, right? The marketing department talking to the client. I work a lot with internal communication, the leader talking with the employees, with the team, and and I found that when we read something, we usually filter that text or piece of text through mm -hmm. our experiences, right? Yes, so exactly. I, I give a meaning to that and that my meaning or what it means to me, it might mean, uh, it might be something different than what it means to you or right. what you intended, right? Yeah, so right. that's one side. So so when you and your influencers, right? The, the team of influencers you work with communicate with their tribe, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's the, the written piece, but then it's also the visuals, right? Uh, what I found and what I see the trends are to be much, much less uh, exclusive in or excluding in communication. So what I mean by that is I see the pictures and the visuals that are used to be much more inclusive, right? To be able to give that feeling that if I put a, a white male in the per, in a picture, I might exclude, you know, females or black females or females of color or you know, what what do you think about this you know how does um what do you see from your perspective because you you, you have much more insight than i have in, in that kind of visual communication yeah i think um it's it being an influencer is it maybe it might have been in that way where you would think first 
what can I gain from my community? What can I gain from the following that I have? But since there are so many influences now, it's more about what can I give back to my community? What can I, I how can I change the world? How can I inspire? How can I, I as a person give something back to the community? That's where we see that the, the followings will grow. So if you're able to, in some way, and it's it's very different from influencer to influencer, but in some way change the world for, for the better, then, then that is where you can do it. So if you're into LGBT communities or you're into female rights or whatever it is, then you can use your your um, following to improve improve this and give back. Absolutely, it's like giving a or having a higher purpose for your company. You know, as a leader, than just profits right and or selling the products and services yeah oh this this has been fantastic so maybe a more personal question what has been the best leadership advice you ever got and how did that help you yeah i think he will be very happy to hear this but i would say my boyfriend is my biggest biggest source of uh, advice when it comes to this he's uh, also a management consultant and has helped many companies grow so he always he knows a lot about leadership and, and all of this. And I think the best advice he gave me a few years ago, which I have thought, I also talked a bit about it today, but I have thought about a lot is, is remember to always look at yourself from an outside perspective. As a leader, you have to be really aware and always evaluate yourself in, in some way. And it sounds really tough and it is really tough and it requires a lot, but you always have to be able to look at yourself from an outside perspective and know how this will affect things um i think that is the best advice i would wow and say. that's the same with with the empathy right so being able to 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 be aware um how the other person sees me right and, mm. and be able to take that kind of thing back in and and, and also one idea that uh, i i share with leaders is that we when we compare ourselves with other people or or when we look at ourselves, we know ourselves from the inside, right? So we know all of our shortcomings, we know our mistakes, right? We know our insecurities. But when people see us, they see us from the outside, right? They don't know all of those things. And it's very healthy habit, as you say, to step out and maybe look at ourselves from the outside and have that, maybe also have a an assessment or have a 360 degree feedback from the team helps you know a lot to to make sure that we have a realistic picture yeah. of ourselves right yeah exactly and that's right. also where it's important to create a culture where it's okay to give feedback and accept that feedback and not do like a punishment culture where people don't give any feedback because that is the worst you can do as a leader yeah and i'm 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 sure you you do great in in, in that area and uh, you have created the culture for, for your team and, and the results speak for themselves. So it's been lovely to have you today. I would like to close with, with a question that I usually ask all my guests, like what does leadership for the now means to you? Like what is one phrase, one idea, one word that would describe leadership for you in today's world? I think it means being present as a leader, showing your team that you care and that you are them. You're there for them right here, right now. Oh, wow! Thank you. Being present, showing to your team that you care, and being there for them right here, right now. Yeah. Wow! Thank you so much for being on today. It's been lovely having you. You share with us so many nuggets, especially in the field that I think it's very new to leaders. Many leaders sit, uh, you know, in in seats in their companies, and maybe they. At their tables, maybe there are some ideas about working with influencers that come to the table, proposals, and and because you know knowledge is, is now is not part of our training, right? As a leader, you're not trained to understand these fields, right? To be able to make a decision if this is right or wrong for for your company. So thank you for bringing a little bit of light in this field, and thank you for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Have a lovely. Uh, Christmas and, and New Year and uh, for our viewers see you back in January on 17th of January will be the next show. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.